Hi everyone and welcome back to the Tormek studio here in Indesberg, Sweden. We are here for today's special episode where we will be entirely focusing on our diamond wheels, their history, their structure and so on. And for that occasion I have a special guest, our CEO Håkan Persson. Welcome Håkan. Thank you Sebastian. But you're not invited because you're the CEO, you're invited oh. because you are the most knowledgeable I know in abrasives. I would say the most knowledgeable in abrasives here at Tormek. You're mm. also a big part of our development and innovation teams for mm. the last decade. Mm. Uh, and I also sometimes call, refer to you as the father of the diamond wheels, <laughs> or the man behind the diamond wheels. Is that uh, yeah. Yeah. correct? Thank or you, Sebastian. <laughs> that's, that's about it. Yes. That's about <laughs> it. Great. Uh, I thought perhaps you could begin with telling us telling us a bit more about your background mm. uh, and particularly your background with abrasive, I think mm. could be interesting to hear a bit about. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I started uh, 1984 with abrasives. It was one of my first jobs and uh, I've been close to Diamond and CBN, so to say super abrasive in through all my career and uh, I've been working both with uh, R&D doctors in large abrasive companies, but most of the time I spend with uh, production and application engineers uh, at the, the, the large Swedish production companies like uh, Sico Tools, Sandvik, Volvo, these kind of companies. So, so abrasives, I've been around. And, and you're closing Every. the circle here with back with the abrasives. Uh. Yes, that's uh, that's one of the reasons why I like tool make and uh, sharpening. Yeah, it's still abrasives. Yeah, perfect. I will get back to you, Okan. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, I thought I was going to tell you viewers a bit more about uh, the different diamond wheels options we have. Um, so the th we have three different diamond wheel options. They're all comfortable with our T8, T7, 2000, all our bigger machines we have. The first one is a diamond wheel coarse, it's 360 grit. Uh, this is more for steel removal, uh, rapid steel removal. It's not really a finishing stone uh, because I think the finish is not fine enough. Then we have our diamond wheel fine, uh, which is 600 grit. This I would say is our most all round stone that combines rapid steel removal with a, a good finish. This would be the, the wheel I would recommend for wood turners, um, knife sharpening, chisels. So this is which most users would benefit from the diamond wheel fine. Then we also have the diamond wheel extra fine, uh, which is 1200 grit. This is a wheel perfect for wood carving tools or more expensive knives where you don't want to remove that much steel and you want uh, to give them some extra love and a perfect finish. Uh, common for all our diamond wheels is that they are plated also on the outside, which means you can use them with our MB100. Uh, big advantage with diamond wheels is that you never create grooves in the wheel, which makes you never need have to true this, the wheels, which is a, a big pro compared to, to original stones. Also, they always keep the same diameter, so if you want to remove steel with the coarse wheel and then change to the extra fine and make the perfect finish, you just have to change the wheels, you don't have to reset the tool, the jig and so on. Uh, that was shortly about our different diamond wheels and um, the different places of use. Good, back to you Håkan, I thought. Uh, After, it's a, almost two years ago we released our diamond wheels, but I know that um, there is a lot of work often behind releasing a new product such mm. as the diamond wheels. Could you please tell us a bit more about how, how you thought when you released the diamond wheels, the work behind? Mm. I think that would be interesting for the viewers. Mm. Yes, like I, like I told you, we, um, I started with abrasive, with super abrasive already in 1984. At that time, the super abrasive was very expensive and only used in uh, high production applications and industrial applications. Uh, but of course, I, I knew about the performance of the abrasive itself. So 
it's um, always been interesting to introduce it to also applications where conventional abrasives have been a part. And that's have been my job over the years, really to move from conventional abrasive into super abrasive to gain productivity in many of the different uh, grinding applications around. And uh, after a while being in Tormek, I realized that uh, there may be a, a need for this also, for, for uh, this kind of tool sharpening that you do in a, in a Tormek machine. So I started uh, thinking about this and uh, I realized that, that the cost level now reach reasonable level so we can introduce that as a product for, for uh, this kind of application. And I actually made some wheels and we did some internal testing and after that we uh, asked some of our good friends around who know about uh, tool sharpening in depth and do it in depth. So one of the customers we sent out to test for, for, for a wheel for test was Glenn Lucas in Ireland and he together with many others really reacted positively and said this is, this is something that really helps and that encouraged us to, to move on. Yeah exactly. So it encouraged you not only was it useful for them but also that there was qual the quality held up because they had tested for quite some time and, and yeah, yes, of course. I mean, we, we can't launch a product that doesn't last. No, no, exactly. And uh, is, is w where it's not uh, a real benefit no. for the customer. Uh, that's always our so biggest So you goal. had it in your back mind for many years, but then finally the stars were aligning with the cost uh, and... I, I would say so, yeah. yes. And it's a way of doing it. So, yeah, I think that was a good timing for, yeah. for doing this. and. Uh, that's, that's yeah, they, what have, it is. they have been very well received, I would say. Um, in yes, general. absolutely. And I, yeah. Great. Could you please tell us a bit more about the diamond wheel structure and design? Um, mm. How is it? How is it made? Um, it's actually a precision machined steel core, uh, and uh, on that steel core, you apply the. the diamond abrasive with a galvanic process. Yeah. So each diamond grit is built into to nickel to mm -hmm. stick onto the steel core. And believe it or not, but it's only one layer of diamonds. So that's, uh, it's not a thick layer. No. So because of that, it's, it's quite sensitive to, to damage, yeah. to high forces, but it's, it's uh, very solid. And we decided to make it with the same design as uh, our um, original stones, so you will be able to, to sharpen also on the side of the wheel. There is some people who really prefer to get a completely flat surface. So then you can use the MB100 and, and get a, a nice flat surface on that tool, so you prefer that. So that is another pro with the diamond wheels and that gives the users a, an extra benefit um, yes. compared to, to original stones. Mm -hmm. Great. You said it was steel core, the diamond wheel. Mm -hmm. I know that in a lot of uh, CVN wheels produced and other, they use aluminium instead. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose to go for steel instead of aluminium? Mm -hmm. It's always uh, easier to make a galvanic process with a steel core. You need less steps and you need less uh, chemicals. We try to stay away from as much chemicals and, and uh, environmental hazards as possible. So because of that we choose on the steel, but also because of the steel is a more solid, more a stronger material, more resistant to bumps and so on. This aluminum is quite soft. So there are two main advantages yeah. really. Uh, great. Um, uh, where was I? I had many more questions. Uh, <coughs> yeah, when I'm out there meeting customers, I often being put on the spot and asked hard questions. So I would, <laughs> I thought I would take um, the opportunity in hand now that I'm the one asking questions. How long is the lifespan for the diamond wheels? How many knives can I sharpen on <laughs> yes. a diamond wheel? 
Yes. Mm? This is the kind of questions uh, sometimes facing, and, and it's always difficult. You can never, can never determine the num number of edges you can grind because it has so many factors affecting that. But uh, let's put it this way: the diamond itself, the hardness of the diamond, and the wear resistance of a diamond, it will last almost forever. And uh, so. So as, as long as you treat the wheel with a reasonable force, it will last years. Yeah. You can you probably know about uh, your diamond home yeah. that you've been using home and you, many people have had it for generations. It's uh, more or less impossible to wear out. And I mean, this is actually exactly the same product. It's a, diamond coated steel uh, hone. The only difference is this is rotating and uh, it's machined so you can take the benefit of, out of that. Yeah. And so it, it lasts very very long time as long as you don't put too much pressure on it. So if I understand it correctly the thing is that it won't <laughs> wear out, uh, mm. it will become less and less aggressive over time. So really if I have a fine wheel uh, mm. I could, even if it, uh, it's not as aggressive mm. after a year or two, I could still use it as a finer wheel mm. and buy a diamond, a new fine. Is that correct? Yeah, th uh, that's absolutely correct. Because when the, when the wheel is brand new, it's very aggressive because all the diamond grits are completely sharp yeah. and at a little bit different uh, height. So it's very aggressive and that's the, not the normal uh, rate of cut you experience during the first tools mm. and you should be very careful because at that level the wheel is the most in the most sensitive mood yeah. so when you have been using it for a while you can more you more reach the normal uh, uh, the more surface finish you, you, you should will, expect you should of expect. the grid size yeah. yes and then, then you slowly but surely make it even finer and finer oh, yeah. and finer yep so <coughs> there is a running period mm. where you should put even less pressure yep. and, and in general it will last mm. forever as long as you don't put too much pressure, is that? Exactly, that good should be, th that's a good summary. Perfect. Uh, people often, I, I keep on with the questions I get yeah, when yeah. I'm out there, <laughs> yeah, yeah. putting you on the spot, <laughs> sorry for that. Uh, people, people often ask question, why are you using diamonds instead of CBN? Mm -hmm. Or sometimes even people say diamond C and CBN, aren't that the same mm -hmm. thing? Could you please elaborate a bit more about that? Oh, yes. No, it's not the same thing. It's the same group of abrasives. They are both super abrasives. Yeah. Uh, boron is the base for CBN and carbon is the base for diamond. So it's uh, two different crystals and uh, the reason why we go for diamond is because it's by far the hardest material in the world and uh, when, um, when you're using an abrasive at this low speed in our, like in our machines you really can take the advantage of the diamond. The diamond has a limitation when you go up too high in speed and generate heat. The heat doesn't cope with its carbon in steel, then you get the reaction and break down the diamonds. So that's the reason why sometimes people say you shouldn't use uh, diamond for steel. But that's not true. That's only true when you grind at high speed. On low speed, like uh, honing applications, uh, like this slow speed applications, diamond is the preferred abrasive in my point of view. Great. So <coughs> the other manufacturers that have high speed grinders are not crazy for using CBN. No. They're using it because they create more heat. Yep. Uh, but for our application, diamond is, is optimal. Absolutely. In a bench grinder, diamond is not the choice. No. You have to go for CBN because that's resist the heat better than diamond and you, make it possible. You explained it much better than I do when I'm out there. So oh, I think it was, a, it was a great <laughs> explanation. Thank you. Um, I think that was 
pretty much all the questions I had uh, for you, Hokan. Do you have mm. anything you would like to add or? Not really. No. I, I hope uh, you get a good picture and got what you expected. You, you <laughs> I, I, got, I got what <laughs> I expected. <laughs> Thank you very much, Walker, for taking your time. Uh, I have the privilege to sneak into your office whenever mm. I want if I have questions about abrasives mm. or other um, sharpening questions. Mm. The viewers don't always have that, so I mm. think they really appreciate you mm. being here mm. and, and explaining. It's We're getting a bit nerdy or <laughs> in-depth, but I think mm. people often ask mm. questions, and I think this could interest many of our mm. viewers. Mm. And to you, the viewers, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope also you learned plenty. If you have further questions, please ask them in the commentary below and we'll try to answer them as best as possible in writing. Uh, I think that's it. Mm. Stay safe, stay sharp, and until next time. Thank mm. you. Thank you. See you. <laughs>